Nick Roush and Adam Luckett here at Kroger Field where Mark Stoops just spoke with the media for about 30 minutes today and he opened by saluting all the first responders on the 22nd anniversary of the attacks on September 11th and it was hitting close to home for the Kentucky football family because yesterday Liam Cohen underwent a medical episode while watching film right behind us at the Joe Craft training facility and they needed first responders to act, act swiftly. Sounds like they had, he was mum intentionally, Mr. Luckett. He did not get into too many details about Liam Cohen's upcoming status, but said the overall prognosis is good. Um, but as far as, is he going to be back this week? Who's going to call plays? What are they going to do? They're figuring it out. And I don't think they're in a rush to because uh, overall Liam is expected to return home today, but he's intentionally keeping it mum. Uh, the only details we really got is that once they were able to exhale a little bit, they did return to work, but it, it, it was a tough day for the Kentucky football staff. That's really all we have at the moment, uh, because when Stoots was asked directly, he just said, I'm not getting into that about who's calling the plays on Saturday. So we're very much in a holding pattern here in regards to that. And so that's where everybody's, I think, mind and attention is at the moment. But also... Uh, a day in which Stoops talked about, like to me, communication again was kind of the a key talking point today. Just there's little things that they're not getting hammered down, and that that's really hurting them on the field. Well, and and that's the part that puts everybody in an awkward spot because a lot of what they need to iron out offensively, well, the guy that's typically calling all the shots, yep, is, I mean, he was in the hospital yesterday uh, and giving everybody a scare. So it's a little weird. You hope that everybody can just kind of exhale and move forward and it, it sounds like they at least are like okay we we have some problems here the word that i heard multiple times they look at miss id and yeah. that that goes down to offense offensive line on pass protection it's the running backs missing holes and it's also third down defense guys just going to the wrong spots and i think the latter is the biggest one they got to get off the field on third down there there's talk about expediting, expediating play calling, getting more plays called in, but they have to possess the ball to run plays. Yeah. To possess the ball, you have to move the, move the chains, obviously, but the defense has to get off the field, and that's been a big issue, I think, so far through eight quarters of football, specifically in second halves. Kentucky's starting these games hot on defense, but they're falling off when they come out of halftime, mainly not getting off the field on third down, so they have to figure out what is going on with their third down packages. Why are they not getting off the field? Why are they having these communication issues? What is what is going on there on third down? So maybe it's a thing where maybe they just need to simplify. Go see ball, hit ball on, on third down instead of maybe getting into more complex stuff. But they got to figure that out. That is the most important part of the team to me mm -hmm. moving forward. It's that and then the offense starting faster. But right now the offense is in a unique spot because of the, yeah. the health situation with Liam Cohen. And we don't really know what things could look like this week. Yeah, and I know the number of plays is a hot button topic. Um, I don't know about you, but I haven't sat around and been like, snap the ball, get the ball out there, let's go. That, I, I haven't felt that problem like it. A lot of getting more plays, too, is also not going three and out on your first possession, not committing untimely penalties, not making mistakes. To get a more quantity of plays, you've got to run higher quality plays. Kentucky's not doing that right now. But with that being said, they're probably going to work on some of the phraseology, how they call certain formations, certain packages, just to get down on the, the length of the plays, which that was a problem under Scangarello, but here's the other thing. Kentucky ranked 73rd in the amount of plays they ran per game back in 2021, but nobody worried about it then because the offense was good, right? And another common thing that happened in 2021, Liam Cohen's first time around like it, they had a slow start, all right? You're worried about Will Levis, or Devin Leary? Will Levis competed 50% of his passes in the second game through a couple picks. Like, it wasn't, uh, they weren't firing all cylinders right away, so some of this is just being a little patient as they try to figure out who they are uh, while throwing the ball more than they're used to. I'm not really worried about the overall plays. They had seven possessions in the first half. They didn't have the plays you wanted because they couldn't move the football. <laughs> like that, that, like the yeah. plays is a very bottom issue for me. It's yeah. other issues that I would be worried about. Why is Devin Leary starting these games slow? To me, that is a bigger issue. Why is he missing throws early? Do we need to get him hit? Is that like what? <laughs> yeah. It's like just like somebody go out there and knock his ass around. Quarterback draw, first play. Boom. Right. And then the first game, they have eight possessions. Part of that was because they had a scoop and score and they had a kickoff return for touchdown. Yeah. Then the reason they didn't have possessions is because the defense isn't getting off the field. So, to me, like, it's not – the lack of plays isn't from lack of, like, just them totally milking the clock. If you want them to go full gas and get more tempo, that that's an argument for – 
another situation. But I don't think their overall process is wrong. They just have to get – They've got to play better. they got to play complementary football. Yeah. They did not play complementary football, I don't think, last week. And that is the bigger issue overall. And they have to figure out the starts on offense. The first two games have been bad uh, offensively. Uh, they have to figure that out. They left a lot of points on the board against Ball State because they couldn't move the ball. And then they had a possession here where they get the ball to 25 after Trevor Wallace forces a fumble and it ends up in an interception. And so they have to figure out the starts of the game. That's really the biggest issue, I think, with the offense has right now. I do think some overall positives. Uh, the offensive line has been protecting Devin Leary. Um, aside from some miss IDs, of course, as Stoops mentioned, but Corlin Ford played well, um, Stoops reported. PFF also graded him as the highest player on the entire Kentucky offense. Jeremy Flax is expected to be back uh, this week, to be available. There weren't other, any significant shakeups, injuries on the depth chart, but you got an Akron team coming to town. One that I almost wanted to ask Stoops, to like, how close was he to hiring Joe Moorhead? I mean, that was a real thing before he got the Akron job a year ago. Uh, that there was a chance that Joe Moorhead might be Kentucky's offense coordinator. Yeah, when he hired Liam Cohen, that was the other name in 2021, yeah. That, yeah. That, that big search. Um, so I think that's in, uh, 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 the little cool little storyline. I think Kenneth Horsey, also expect him to be out on Saturday, was not on the depth chart. I think he'll miss at least this game, maybe one more, till you get him back. But offensive line, I think, has been, been good. Um, the, the offense approach is just different because we're seeing more zone scheme in the run game, so it's less north-south, it's more east-west. Um, but they've done some good things when running the ball. They just haven't committed to the run, Nick. No. They're coming out and they're just throwing the ball. They're, they're slinging it around it's the air. It's baby. And I, ha- I, had, I had my doubts that they would do that, but they are doing that. Devin Leary has gone to halftime with over 20 throws per, mm-hmm. at, at, the, at the half. And they're not running a ton of plays, as we've mentioned. So they're not really committing to the run. I, I, I'll be interested to see if maybe we see more of that if we get the big dog fence. Big dog fence. Do we uh, do we crank up the run? Do we crank up the run game and get the tight ends involved? So I mean, we'll have to see. People forget about the big dog <laughs> fence. The big dog <laughs> fence, a legendary moment in Kentucky football history. This week, Kentucky is also celebrating 50 years of Commonwealth Stadium in Kroger Field. Uh, I think the 50th anniversary was a Friday or will be this Friday, so they're going to honor some of the biggest games that's ever been played here at the home of Kentucky football. Uh, a weird week here. There's, there's no getting around that. Uh, things are going to be odd. They might be a little sullen, but they also might – I don't know, provided some sort of spark, some sort of motivation for these players. You don't know how they're going to handle it. It's some unexpected adversity. Um, But if there was something that I I learned about this team in preseason, there was some good signs that this team is close and that adversity isn't going to cause them to unwind. There's been plenty of opportunities for that to happen with the first halves the last couple of weeks, but they found ways to bounce back. Now they're getting a little bit of adversity off the field. We're going to see how they handle it in the lead-up to this Akron game. And the offensive line – playing well through injuries like them dealing with that and still playing competent football that's something we didn't see last year so that is a good thing to me I think the bigger overarching like point I I take I have of the team is they just need Devin Leary to be a star like I don't think there's really getting around it like he has got to be a star for them to be what they want to be and to do that he's got to play better in first halves and so that is a real challenge I think for them moving forward is finding a way to be better coming out and starting games if they can do that They've proven they can get into halftime and settle in and figure out what they need to do and make some adjustments. But it's starting games, and that's to me what I really want to see. I want to see a fast start Saturday against Akron. I think that's the most important thing to look for. It was a little slow starting, a little overcast for the EKU game. Now they're playing under the lights. They're going to be waiting around all day for a 7.30 kickoff. We'll see how the Cats perform against the Akron Zips Saturday night at Kroger Field.